Alors, je vais mettre par là, comme ça, je vous voyais. So I stand over here so I can see everyone. Severine, you're a philosopher, uh, associate research at the University of Paris 8, author of African Philosophy, which was awarded the Louis Marin de l'Academy of Overseas Sciences, and also Tiffany Pipon, challenging our relationship with the cosmos and nature. You're also a journalist at Le Monde. Achille, and baby, you're there somewhere on the screen. You're a historian, politologist. You published many um, essays on decolonization and taught in South Africa and the United States. At the request of the President of the Republic, you were the architect of the new summit meeting, Africa, France, and the author, after seven months of investigation, of a report entitled to re-found, re-establish relations between France and the continent. Remy, I pointed out your passion for history as well, but you also coordinated the finance agenda, as you said, for the French presidency of COP21, and published Reconciliation, a book which seeks to reinvent the development policy aligned on the famous SDGs and the Paris Accord. So the important topic for you should we really reconcile France and Africa, development and sustainable, history and our future? So the discussion will be exciting. Over to you, Severine. Thank you for this, your presentation. Hello, everyone. And hello, Ashid and Bembe. We're delighted to have you both here to share with us your thoughts and your thoughts that you have started to work on some months ago, both of you. We're celebrating the 80th anniversary of AFD today. It's been eight years now that this agency has been supporting our companies in their evolutions. We saw that through the short video uh, presenting it, 80 years, which saw hard times, wars, deadly conflicts, the fall of the Berlin War, and also decolonization, the recomposition of African societies and their economies, the development, the emergence of uh, digital, maintaining or deployment of mining economy that is, doesn't care much for the environment, and also living beings and human beings as well. We know today that Africa is one of the first uh, continent to be impacted by global warming, caused mainly by the economies in countries in the north and their lifestyle. I don't want to, to paint an apocalyptic picture. We saw in the video, things aren't that bad after all with the emergence of digital that has allow, allowed us to have wonderful innovation. Sciences and techniques have improved the living conditions and health, and societies are getting more democratic and education is making progress. But we need you to shed light, both of you, to understand what's going on. We have been feeling, Ashil Bembe, that we are at a tipping point where everything is possible, the best and the worst. Some analysts um, speak about a tipping point of the world. Do you share that view? And what are the main challenges in today's world? Thank you, Severine, and good evening, everyone, and happy anniversary for the AFD and all his teams. Severine, I think it's a tipping point moving towards the limits, because Earth, with a capital E, and we know that it is a finite system, this Earth is constantly contracting. It is about to reach its limits. It seems to me that this experience of its limits, and of course the litany of extreme situations it generates, that some, well, we know 
that for many regions in the southern regions of the world, creating living beings from the what is uh, unlivable for centuries, that was our condition. But what's new, because there's something new, is that from now on, we share proofs of the extreme with several others, others whom we can protect in future. No walls, no borders, no bubble, or confines. But I hope that Rémi will come back to what I will be pointing out. I'd like to draw your attention to three key events that we are experiencing at this moment. First of all, the disruption in the equilibrium in the natural processes of our planet that is now in progress. That equilibrium is in jeopardy at a time when capital, more than ever before, is being injected in projects for infinite extensions. Infinite extensions seeking to reduce societies to just the markets. It is a key event. We cannot pretend that this momentum is not in progress. Reducing societies to markets, but also the technical and almost total control, not only of human exchanges, but of the living in general. This is the situation when you observe it, for example, from Africa or South Africa, where I am right now. This is the situation. And this is why, without um, being apocalyptic, this is why I believe we can assert that we are in the era of the combustion of the world, an era when the possibility of a generic disruption casts a shadow over the membrane of our world. This disruption is being pushed forward by all the technological uh, changes we are witnessing. You yourself pointed out earlier the progress that has been made in technology with the advent of digital. I would say that recent history of humankind may be viewed in terms of two periods, a pre-digital and a digital era. It's not a matter of whether or not this is good or bad. It is unavoidable at any rate. The question is, in the midst of all this, how will we be able to continue not only to gather and store data and process data, and in so doing, to give free flow to digital. The question is, in this world where digital is coding and recoding living beings and whether or not it will still be possible to have room for human reason, in other words, for consciousness, for an intelligence 
that can generate not only facts but meaning. The, the, I would say that a meaning is something that is much sought out today. This is one of the founding elements that requires us, I believe, to pay great attention. I spoke about uh, the rise of technology, but I wouldn't only like to point out constraints and uh, hindrances. I would also like to draw your attention to possibilities and even innovation in terms of what is being uh, what, what is emerging. I believe that Africa is a wonderful laboratory, not only for things that are coming, but also things emerging from the mist around us, giving us hope and a sense of reassurance. Africa as a laboratory, those who go through it, and who stay there, and who listen, and who open up their eyes and ears, and try to learn. That person will quickly realize to what extent most regions of the African continent have kept strong traditions and relations from peer to peer. The economic production or the production of means of subsistence depend on the two principles of auto-organization and sharing resources as well as skills. We realize to what extent efforts made at sharing are essential in general creation. When I say that, that also includes innovation. I therefore believe that you have all of this that is a source of hope, not only in Africa, but also elsewhere. Rémy, you are the head of an agency that uh, is uh, very pragmatic in the field. Have you noted the same from your experience in action. What are the main difficulties based on your field experience are we facing today? And how can FD evolve in this changing world? Thank you, Severin. And I'd like to thank Achille Mbembe for being with us. Two months ago, he was in Montpellier. He didn't speak much there, Achille, huh? so he's taking the floor today. Others uh, spoke very well indeed, but it is really wonderful to hear him. And I hope we can add to the voice of social sciences and philosophy and history adding, therefore, the voice of artists and maybe the voice of uh, practitioners to see if we have the same analysis and if the great disruptions that Achille described are equally confirmed. I strongly believe that public development banks, uh, including AFD, Caisse de Depot and Consignation as well in France, BPI as well. Around the world, these investment development banks also sense these uh, tensions, a bit like uh, seismographers, with the ability to share their perception of vibrations and to reduce those vibrations. As a matter of fact, we have a research department we have a risk department as well that seeks to measure as accurately as possible the credit of uh, states and companies. In the panel analysis, 
in the financial statements and the financial equilibrium, how can you reflect uh, the deterioration of what we can see in reality? Our establishment, as I said in my introduction, is very close to so many stakeholders in society. And we can therefore perceive anguishes and tensions. And we'll make all of this public in a few days. Every year, we publish uh, surveys on top of dialogues that we have with our clients. We have these in France, relations between the French and the world. And what we observe is truly a massive growing awareness of the major transformations in progress. We can see that very deep down in the social body, in the political bodies in France and in Europe and around the world, I believe, with a great anguish if we are unable to face these limits with this sense that we can touch on the environmental, social, and economic dimensions with brand new means of actions to cope with this. And I will conclude by saying that my experience and that of all colleagues at AFD and in our development and financing world, there was a major revolution in 2015 with the Paris Agreement, the Sustainable Development Goals, in other words, phrasing a new universal narrative, a universal narrative that pays attention to singularities and contexts, and with goals and targets and the desire for a better world for all by the, let's say, 2015. That's the time when we should have uh, carbon neutrality. And the world that is being deployed differently and that is perceived differently. Since then, we have um, a sort of tension that is unclear and uncertainties as regards what will vanquish. Would it be our geopolitical quarrels that are classics and that are there maybe stronger than ever before? Or will we have the global questions that have been raised, and we all experience this. Well, there may be fears, or it, or it may be a source of hope that may emerge to subsume or to reach beyond the old uh, disparities and fractures and help to reduce them. I believe we have this experience, and it is in line with what Achille said. And like Achille, I also believe that what is happening in Africa on this front is quite singular. And it is important for Africa itself, but it is equally important for us, and it can be a source of inspiration for us, we must look at all of these people, kind of analyses with the ability to act for them to come together, maybe in coalitions that are bigger, more powerful, larger than ever before, and to set things in action. And I'll end with finance. Finance, that is our profession. We are financial establishment. Finance is not technical. Finance is all about time. It's when you believe in the long term. And finance is all about links, bringing people together closer. And finance means uh, bringing about concrete projects by accelerating them. So this, I believe, is our analysis and what we could share with everyone today. Well, this world, which is uh, ever-changing, uh, obliges us to uh, rethink the world, to inhabit the world. And for this, uh, we need uh, to work on imagination. Well, that is what a number of uh, researchers, scientists, uh, philosophers, uh, actors, uh, uh, social actors uh, invite us to do. I propose that we listen to them um, it was uh, done by Sarah Marnies and uh, the team of the AFD News of Tomorrow. Tant qu'on essaie de, de d'imposer des modèles, on ne laisse pas assez la capacité de produire des nouveautés. 
crois que trop souvent, on essaie de, d'importer des solutions qui ont marché ailleurs, qui sont des buzzwords, qui sont des choses... Euh, allez, tout le monde en parle, donc il euh, ne faut pas qu'on soit en marge. Il faut faire la ville intelligente, même si on ne sait pas ce que ça veut dire. I would like to see our... Um, countries like Africa and Asia and South America not to copy the failed Western economic industrial system. On n'a jamais eu un diagnostic aussi intelligent. On en meurt de cette intelligence du diagnostic. Je pense que le grand défi, c'est cela, c'est d'articuler la politique à la connaissance. Nous ne croyons pas ce que nous savons. Les freins principaux euh, viennent de nous. Euh, on a tous des barrières mentales dans la tête. Nos esprits sont formés à des visions unilatérales, simplificatrices, et ces visions unilatérales et simplificatrices nous conduisent souvent en erreur. Le problème est le conditioning de nos minds. Nous sommes somehow conditioned that economy ou money, mais je l'appelle money nomi, money va nous rendre heureux. Le plus grand défi est vraiment really changing notre mode de vivre dans le monde et d'acting avec le monde. Il faut absolument qu'on change de prisme de regard sur la nature, donc c'est, c'est une vraie révolution de montée en conscience philosophique où l'être humain s'émerveille du vivant, s'émerveille de la nature et s'interdit de la souiller, de la détruire, de la polluer. Il faut s'ancrer aussi dans le, le, le plaisir, la gratitude d'être sur une planète aussi belle, malgré tous les problèmes, qui nous a permis d'être là. I am nature and I have no right to spoil, to waste, to pollute, to damage, to harm nature. Pour savoir où l'on va, il faut savoir d'où l'on vient. Je crois que nous devons, pour les générations actuelles et futures, faire ce travail de reconquête de notre histoire, pas dans un esprit de, de revanche, mais dans un esprit justement d'asseoir le process de développement sur des bases solides. One of the first challenge that we need to really tackle is a self-esteem of Africans. We need to build African self-esteem. C'est une question de dignité, c'est une question de justice sociale. Voilà ce qui en fait quelques éléments qui nous permettent de voir qu'il s'agit de, de penser les blessures. Je pense qu'il est important de remettre l'humain au centre de tous les enjeux, au centre des problèmes, au centre des solutions. Ça veut dire euh, écouter les populations, et trouver des solutions avec des populations. Dire « je », c'est reconnaître la part de l'autre en soi. Dans le Sud Gabon, on dit que le jeu est à nous. Nous sommes un jeu qui porte toute une génération, je dirais, toute une transmission, et que toutes ces transmissions interconnectées permettent justement de se recentrer sur des, des projets, des perspectives profondément humaines. On est vraiment très faible. Ce que ça veut dire, c'est qu'on est obligé de se lier. On a besoin que quelqu'un fasse attention à nous, comme sujet individuel, pour survivre. C'est le lien qui est important, c'est la reliance, c'est ça. Dans le fond, l'individu n'est pas séparé. Il ne peut s'épanouir que dans la communauté avec autrui et dans l'amour avec autrui. Ce n'est que dans l'échange et dans, le, et dans, et dans la conscience de, la, de l'interdépendance, justement, et de la totalité organique heureuse, que l'on peut être dans un vrai échange. Quoi. Les mouvements, la migration, les, les brassages, n'est pas l'exception, c'est la condition de possibilité de la vie sur cette planète. Je suis convaincu justement que la culture est ce véhicule qui peut nous aider à créer du lien social, à avoir des conversations et des discussions avec les politiques, avec le milieu économique, pour amorcer justement cette bascule qu'on attend tous. On pense la culture comme une ouverture, comme une tension, comme quelque chose qui permet à l'individu de s'enrichir au fur et à mesure de ses rencontres, au fur et à mesure de ses pérégrinations. On sait très bien que le, le monde bascule aussi par les minorités. Hein. It's about also bringing all the actors together. We really need to get one person can't solve this issue, so or these issues. We need to get everybody involved and taking part in um, in um, solving the problem. Le défi du 21e siècle, c'est l'intelligence collective. Et donc on a besoin de dialoguer les uns avec les autres. On a besoin de comprendre le point de vue de l'autre. On a besoin d'empathie et de compassion pour euh, se mettre à la place des autres et se rendre compte que euh, la solution ne viendra que d'un collectif qui sera capable de se mettre d'accord sur les meilleures manières de d'être confronté à ces problèmes de développement durable. Apprendre peut-être à travailler autrement, de manière plus collaborative entre le secteur public, le secteur privé, 
les, les secteurs académiques, les start-up, les grandes entreprises. Et, et là, c'est, euh, je pense, une leçon d'humilité pour tous. Je suis juste un exemple de beaucoup de jeunes gens en Afrique qui ont pu développer leurs skills, construire des business, et uh, build solutions for themselves just because there's access to technology and the internet. Ma génération fait vraiment partie des entrepreneurs euh, qui sont euh, motivés par l'action et qui ne sont pas résignés, qui ne, sont, qui ne croient pas à la fatalité. Ces réponses, elles existent, mais elles existent dans euh, ce qu'on appelle le monde de demain, dans ces, ces nouvelles niches, ces nouvelles technologies, ces nouvelles innovations euh, qui existent à petite échelle locales qui sont encore un petit peu cachées euh, et qu'il faut mettre à l'échelle. L'enjeu, c'est comment toutes ces innovations qui restent quand même micro peuvent s'inscrire dans ce qu'on appelle une trajectoire technologique. Pour un meilleur futur désirable, il va falloir retravailler sur notre rapport à l'économie. Déjà la considérer, parce que beaucoup de gens la déconsidèrent, et habiter cette maison, parce que l'économie à l'origine, c'est la maison commune, c'est l'organisation de la maison. Comment est-ce qu'on fait que le sens ben, soit la boussole ou quoi Ce qui fait que les êtres humains ont pu prendre le dessus sur toutes les autres espèces, c'est leur capacité de s'organiser à des millions, voire à des milliards, et d'embarquer des millions ou des milliards d'individus dans une quête commune et que le moyen d'y parvenir, ce sont les récits. On est l'animal du pourquoi. Fondamentalement, les êtres humains sont des êtres poétiques, c'est-à-dire que ce sont des, des créatures dont euh, la façon d'exister de, dans le monde est essentiellement euh, poétique et essentiellement structurée par des récits et des visions poétiques. Il nous faut travailler aussi sur des récits qui nous donnent envie d'avenir. Face à ce monde qui oppresse, il faut substituer un monde désirable. Il faut recourir au royaume de l'imagination pour faire advenir une, un, monde, un monde meilleur. Le texte littéraire, c'est un lieu où on fait humanité. L'émotion, c'est quelque chose euh, qui nous met, hein, quelque chose qui nous sort de nous-mêmes pour nous porter dans le monde et qui nous évite... Euh, une sorte de fidélité ossifiée euh, à nous-mêmes. Même dans les ténèbres, en fait, il peut y avoir toujours une lumière d'espoir. Et cet espoir-là, en fait, c'est à nous de le faire renaître. Cet espoir-là, c'est à nous de le créer. À mon avis, il faut continuer à croire en nos valeurs, en nos vérités, quoi qu'il arrive. Et à un moment donné, les événements peuvent s'éclaircir. Moi, je crois que c'est ça qu'on appelle la résistance. So, Rémi Rio, I turn to you. I think we can indeed uh, applaud all these uh, wonderful words and the uh, incredible work done by your teams. So, we've heard it. Um, it's an incredible challenge that uh, these people invite us to uh, rethink our model and to get out of the conditioning that uh, we find ourselves in. But it's a, a double, even a triple challenge is to question the, the way we do things. Uh, we heard about uh, collective intelligence and there's a third dimension. We uh, ask uh, technical development, but it's also um, you know, um, self-esteem, repairing. So how can we uh, commit in this, uh, to this evolution and to take part in uh, actions who will take care of the living things, the humans, uh, um, you know, in the light of history? I, I, I like the fact that you talk about care. I, I, talk, uh, I talk to Cynthia Flurry, who, uh, whom you see in this, uh, who you saw in this film. And she uh, offered to work, uh, we, we work uh, with uh, her in Mukavu with Dr. Mukabe, and she offered to have a development clinic um, to mobilize uh, a whole bunch of uh, scientists, uh, professionals, uh, to try and redefine, to find the words, to rethink uh, our way of doing things. Um, and what uh, these messages tell us um, is, uh, yes, we must find a narrative um, 
We must uh, find new technologies. Uh, we must um, find new links. Uh, we must pay attention to the territories and to their specific challenges. So I've said so before. It's the message of the uh, objective of sustainable development. I, I think that we already have this framework. Uh, we've had it for six years, um, and we must um, uh, totally uh, uh, you know get get our hands on it and we must change uh, our posture uh, all the way you know into the way we uh, we do things we need to put ourselves on the side of the others not to get away from them but to learn from them to see things differently to uh, go back to yourself uh, and to build uh, collectively so we need to challenge ourselves uh, as the time we celebrate our 80th birthday what it means in terms of development to put yourself on at the side of the others uh, uh, we not there yet and can we do it in a stronger way and by um, uh, you know grasping this uh, technology uh, by you know putting ourselves on the side of others uh, if we deployed uh, fully uh, the power and the capacity of an institution such as, as the AFD and all the others uh, we have a part of the answer because this uh, capacity uh, to finance projects we need to continue we finance uh, a thousand projects a year but we need to do it more and more but uh, projects as many proof uh, uh, that uh, the uh, sustainable development, this transformation is possible, then in our house, we need to go from the project to the advice. We need to go from the project to the public policy, from the project to the transformation of the institutions, to the um, development trajectory. So the good news from Glasgow, I mean, things are, are clear as far as where we want to be in 2050. Now that we know where we want to be in 2050, uh, the pressure is, uh, you know, uh, on 2025, and it will uh, be uh, a question of projects. So it's a, a retroactive um, loop, if you if you will. But I think we can do much more, and we can do much better. We need to mobilize. Uh, we need to mobilize the public aid for development is 150 billion a year. The world investments is uh, 25,000 billion a year. So, how do we, uh, you know, come about to use this uh, uh, public investment? And you you talk about the tipping point. So we need to switch uh, a number of players so that um, the success uh, comes about. So Ashin Bembe briefly to conclude this. Uh, uh, this part, uh, we heard Miriam Mindou said, uh, I um, is in us, uh, and how do we uh, uh, work on this to have uh, the I and the we open, to have an open identity, a dynamic identity, which makes possible to, uh, uh, to, to make room for the others and who also make it possible, as Rémi Rioux uh, said, uh, to uh, be on the side of others and not to be necessarily in the suspicion uh, uh, of, of, of what others have to say and and to to bring us and to position ourselves uh, um, you know in, in a more you know open way and to show more empathy and uh, I will pick up the the word uh, um, of the previous speakers to find uh, the, the um, you know more poetic because we are more we are poetic human beings I, I, I will Mohamed pick up the, this uh, formula of Mohammed and Bogar. So you said, how can we uh, proceed? Uh, Rémi has already indicated a number of uh, approaches, uh, which is uh, in progress uh, in the action of the AFD. So we can very well imagine that our uh, French African institutions uh, and international institutions um, embrace this same spirit. 
But if I were to add something uh, to what Rémi uh, said to us, I would say that above all, before anything else, we need to take the full measure of what that means to live on the same planet with other living beings, whether they are animated or not. What does it mean to live together? It means, as far as I'm concerned, to learn how to care for it, to care for the planet, to learn uh, to repair it. You mentioned this word, reparation, to learn how to share it. The care, the re repair, and the sharing being, from that point of view, the very conditions of this sustainability and our sustainability. So, if we adopt this perspective, therefore, what Rémi was saying uh, makes sense. So development is not just a technique. It's not only uh, modalities of uh, financing. It's not just creating uh, enterprises. It's not just signing contracts. It's not just uh, uh, extending the influence of a country outside of its uh, own borders. It's not only feed the children and uh, care for the sick, uh, build roads and uh, railroads and airports. It's not only borrow money, um, incur debts, um, make profits over debts. Uh, it's, all of this is very important, of course, uh, but it's not um, all that development is. And development that um, um, you know, commits its own ways of uh, subsistence uh, is not uh, a way to do it. Uh, therefore, we need to go back to the uh, idea that uh, most uh, of the people who spoke in the film, uh, prepared by Sarah, um, and they insist on the fact that we need to go back to uh, what makes sense. But in a context, as I specified uh, just a minute ago, that uh, what is the major challenge is our planet going into a finite finite um, age where things are contracting, which demands that uh, we are together going to articulate uh, a vision in common, which would be the consequence of a new planetary awareness, which would be a different one, in my opinion from uh, the old ideas of uh, cosmopolitanism, universalism. Uh, I'm talking about an awareness, a planetary uh, awareness. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the thing we would have in common would be the manifestation of this openness that would me make it uh, meet that we would not um, uh, satisfy ourselves with the with this identity. We could listen to you for hours, uh, Rémi and uh, uh, Achille, but uh, we will continue this uh, wonderful anniversary. So thanks again to both of you for this exchange. Um, and I will now give the floor uh, to uh, Asha for the rest of this wonderful anniversary. Thank you. I think they deserve a round of applause. Uh, thank you, Rémi. Thank you, Achille. Uh,